Lee from Forsaken Age. Welcome to Nightbreed. How are you, man? Yeah, good. Thanks. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, thanks for coming on, man. Um, so how did you guys first get together? Oh shit. Um it's uh hundred years ago or so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Feels like it. Um we actually started playing kicking around playing some um covers. Um, the core group of us at the time. Um, so on the latest album, Tam, myself and Chrissy are the probably the original members from way back then. Oh. Um, yeah, we're just kicking around playing some covers and then we got bored with that pretty quickly um, and just started writing, um, basically with a desire to just write, you know, heavy metal, um, just playing a simple meat and potatoes heavy metal. Yeah, that's cool, man. Yeah. Um, and how does the songwriting work? Like, are you sort of bringing the riffs or like... Um, no, you know? oh, it's changed a bit because I switched to drums recently. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, so we um, we basically jump in a room together and just hash something out. It, over the course of the band's history, which is about, I think about 12 years now, mm. we've done two albums and an EP, which is not a lot of material over 12 years, but that's because we're sitting in a room hashing it out, arguing fall into pieces over it but uh-huh. the product that we get out is something we own uh-huh. it's not something that somebody brings into a room and says hey here's a song this is how we're going to play it uh-huh. um yeah that just wouldn't work work for us um so we, we do it that way yeah that's cool mm-hmm. um and what are the metal gigs like in new zealand like are there plenty of shows for you guys to go yeah to? yeah yeah the, the usually is uh I mean, COVID, like everyone sort of put a kibosh on that for a while and it's taken a wee while for the scene to sort of bounce back. Yeah. Um, we have a very strong extreme metal scene here, mm-hmm. um, which uh, is, um, we don't have so much a, a traditional heavy metal um, following here. But we, I mean, we do we do well enough because we've been around the traps long enough that we've built up enough of a following. Yeah. Because uh, we don't have that sort of, um, I guess that, the rock and roll pedigree that um like Australia has with you know likes of ACDC and Rose Tattoo and and, and bands like that, oh. we we don't really we don't really have that here. If we're a hip hop man, we're probably huge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so going back to uh twenty twelve, the um back from extinction. Um, mm-hmm. so you guys put that out yourselves. Would you do you yeah. like record record at home or something? How did that come together? Yeah, yeah, that was um recorded in several different places. I think um. Some of the vocals was done, was it done at, and or near the toilet or something like that? I think um, mm, <laughs> the yeah. drums were recorded somewhere else. We just did it uh, fairly DIY. It was um, uh, I like I like actually like it because it was um, naive. Um, so we didn't know what the hell we were doing. Um, all we knew is that we'd written some songs. We happened to like them, and yeah, and then we we chucked them out. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I, th- I think um, I love recordings like that. If you you know you go back to like the early '90s death metal scene and things like that with um, bands like oh, like the t-shirt you're wearing there, Carcass, where yeah. you know the, yeah. the recordings yeah. are, are rough, but there, there's something visceral in it. There's you know you can hear that they're enjoying it, having a good time, and yeah. you know. And then later on, when production gets better and there's pressures on them from record labels and that, it, it feels like it changes a bit. Yeah, no, I agree. I definitely prefer like a raw, kind of more real sound to yeah. it. Really. The slick production sometimes bands sound too yeah. similar or something, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah it does. Um, I think Black Metal was a, a fine example of where that's gone as well. Mm. Like you, you had the shitty production in the 90s, which we all laugh and joke about, but now we sort of hold on to it because, you know, they all start to sound the same. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so 2016, you guys put out the uh, Vengeance of the Slain EP and you had like a logo yeah. change. You got the cloak and sword on the cover and stuff. Yeah. Was that like, were you trying to do something different there? A little bit, yeah. We had a uh, change in, so Tam had stepped away from the band for a short period of time while we were doing that EP. Okay. Um, and we had a, a quite a um, uh, energizer bunny behind the drum kit. So we thought we'd make the most of it and write something different. Yeah. Um, it didn't really gel with us. Um, those song we play some of those songs, none of those songs now actually live. Um, and oh, actually we do. We play one. Sorry. Um, and um, yeah, we're trying. We're trying to try something a little darker, something a little, a little bit more savage. Yeah. Um, but I think we sort of strayed away from what we really wanted to do. 
Um, that was quite a painful process at EP because um, we had the band split shortly after that. Okay. And we came back together a little while later. So the fact that we survived that EP is probably something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so talking about drums, um, what made you decide to switch to drums? Because you were playing bass before, right? Yeah, yeah, drummers actually. To be fair, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. so just um, we've had some issues with lineups throughout our history. Generally, um, age differences is a big problem for us because we 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 sort of see oh, there's a hot slick guitarist, we'll get him in and you know see see what it's like. But you know they're young and they're egotistical and things like that. So we lost a lot of that. Then we did the same thing with uh, drama when Tam retired because Tam actually um. Uh, retired after recording the album, okay. um, yeah, because he's, he's getting on getting long in the tooth, like all of us, but him also. Um, and then, yeah, so then I, I got sick of it, um, just dealing with um, with other band members. So I jumped behind the drum kit and we had um, Aiden still on guitar, and we were actually going to at one point just do recording, um, because uh, the three of us work really well together, we love writing and playing music. And then, um, yeah, one of our friends came along and jumped on bass, so now. We've got a, a good solid lineup. Yeah, cool. The uh, the only thing I regret with drums is all the gear. Yeah, yeah, you got the worst <laughs> job carrying that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah, Heavy Metal Nightmare. The album came yeah. out twenty twenty. Um, that's on Pure Steel Publishing. Yeah, which is a, that's a German label, right? Yeah, yeah. So um, it's actually a label I've always wanted to be on. I remember purchasing Cloven Hoof off that label, and um. Just looking at it, going, oh, if there's ever a label that was built for us, it was this one. Cool. Um, and uh, they were really good um, helping us with. Like we had um, design layout and that for uh, for the album when we released it. And um, in a typical German fashion, came back to us and just said no. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's some, um, basically, we learned a lot from from Pure Steel about um, marketing and simplifying. Um, what you're trying to do. Yeah. Um, so we had, you know, fire and flames and all flashy bells and whistles to the label, and they just went, no, we want just simple cover. It needs to stand out next to all of the other ones with fire and flames. And yeah. Yeah, sure. So, yeah. So it's been good on um, Pure Steel. Yeah. yeah. It's a cool cover. Like the hands, all, you know, it's pretty iconic yeah. looking. You know, it's cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was um just um modeled after like the Hammer Horror stuff. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's cool. Um, and uh, you got a track on there, Raven's Cry, with Tim Ripper Owens, which most people yeah. know from you know his time with Judas Priest. How'd you how'd you get yeah. Ripper Owens on there? Oh, cool. well, that's um that goes back to the Back from Extinction album. So our first ever tour was um through New Zealand supporting Tim Ripper Owens. Oh, nice. Okay. So we're not we're not, we're not played a show before as a unit. Um, and then yeah, we ended up on tour, and he's just such a nice guy that um we kept in touch online. Um, oh. and then thought cheekily we'd float the idea uh yeah i mean he doesn't do it for free you obviously got to pay for it but yeah, still sure, it's great sure. great great having him there but um well, another another example of um things you learn that the, the this is professionalism um the tracks he sent through i think we ended up with about nine or ten vocal yeah. tracks just all layered stuff that he'd laid together and yeah. ideas yeah. in the song so yeah it's good that's awesome man. Yeah. Mm. cool um, so away from uh Forsaken Age for a bit, what have you been yeah. listening to lately? What, what are you checking out? Oh, I um, yeah, uh, so I also drum uh, in an uh, extreme band over here as well. Uh, oh, yeah, I've been listening to a lot of stuff. Um, I, I regularly on my playlist is Mortician, I absolutely love Mortician. Yeah, um, I see your t shirt there, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but also lately it's been Archgoat and Funeral Mist. Um, so I was listening to Salvation today, actually, in the office, and it's, I mean, if if you've heard that album, you know, it gets a bit pretty spastic in there, <laughs> and it's quite, it's quite, uh, it was quite intriguing listening to this, watching the world go by. Yeah, cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, what's the other band you're playing in? Ah, it's called Abrasive Troglodyte, mm -hmm. um, and it's basically just old men shouting at clouds. Um, yeah, we playing um the music we used to you know type of music we used to love in the 90s and oh. yeah um we've got um guitar bass and keyboard which is um strange but we're trying to 
I think I was because I was getting obsessed with Beherit at one point. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah. Particularly when they went down the the noise and electronic stuff. And I thought if we could bring that into some um, extreme metal, it'd be pretty cool. Yeah, nice. No, that's cool. Yeah. Um, so with Forsaken Age, uh, you guys got some shows coming up. Are you playing Steel Assassins? Uh, yeah. In November. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah. So we're heading across to you guys. Um, it's I think it's the third time we played Steel Assassins. Um, Dave Balfour, which puts on incredible weekend. Um, oh. we've been back a couple of times as punters as well. Yeah, yeah it's just. A great weekend, a little too long in the tooth to be doing tours, so we're just going to do the one show, okay? Um, yeah, and then we've got a couple over here, um, sometime leading up to it. I think we're playing the um, one that um, Metal Rouge does, the Metal United Worldwide. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So we'll be doing that one as well, yeah, nice, that's yeah. cool. Um, and what about uh, like writing and recording and stuff? Do you guys have plans yeah, to yeah. put out anything? Or? Yeah, we do actually. Um, we were going to be putting out just singles and that because we were, um, when it was to, with the three of us, and then when we brought um, Chris on board to to jump on on bass. Um, so we've we've actually been, had hit this real glut of writing where we've just been we've just 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 shit coming out of everywhere at the moment. Um, and running the full gamut too, I think because um, uh, Chris and I were there. Um, extreme bands that we've been so a lot of that's coming in as well so um yeah so we've got i think about five new tracks so far yeah cool. looking to record at the end of the year again so nice yeah watch your space yeah and then will that be with pure, pure steel again not sure um the, the issue with um the um dealing with the label is there is um we prior to COVID, there was some potential requirements for us to tour and things like that. So uh, we, we may not, we may just go independent again. Yeah. Yeah, fair enough, man. That's cool. But yeah. If I was 20 years younger, I'd be all in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, that's all right, man. It's still yeah. good to good to keep cracking on anyway, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah. That's yeah, cool. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right, look. Um, Sorry, mate. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Pure Steel, great, great label. There's, mm. it, the, only, the only reason we, if we do go, it might be because we've got some energy and, and we'll like put in the sort of the touring requirements, but yeah, probably not. Yeah, no, that's just yeah. cool. All right. Awesome. Lee, thanks so for your time, man. And yeah. um yeah, no I Cheers. look forward to hearing the like I love the sound of um Forsaken Age a bit heavier. That sounds fantastic. That'd be cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well as soon as we've got some tracks, so um we'll throw them your way. Yeah, it's easy. Cheers, man. Yeah, cool. All right, All right. cool. Thanks, Cheers. man. Have a good one. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, yeah.